Hello and good afternoon. Yes, it's afternoon. Uh, been busy this morning. I didn't really see much point in showing you what I showed you last night. So get something done and then show and tell. Right, so uh, shower base is out. Um, finally, to uh, basically cut the wall away because it's an exact fit. And the symptom was that it was leaking because it was cracked. Yeah, you bet your life is. Um, it's cracked all over. It's um, not a very good design. Even though there's a leg in the middle to support the middle, if you're standing off centre, then the supports are in the corner, and you've got quite a quite a bending moment. And um, yeah, it's uh, not not so good that, not such a good design. So that's coming out. <laughs> well, that is out. Um, got this. I had to uh, basically take take this wall out. I thought I might as well because I need to know where all the studding is, and there is a copious amount. This is where the shower mix is going. Uh, the new shower mixer is going. So the other side of that wall, the family bathroom. That's the slope over the up the staircase. That's the airing cupboard, and that's some very itchy, make you cough rock wall uh, or similar. Um, let's take a, a bit more plasterboard out there than I really wanted to, but it's the only way I could get the shower base out because it's an exact fit into the studding and as it has a, a thickness um, need to uh, need to rotate it upwards so next stage is clear all this up and out um, waterproof thing find out where that goes um, so the floor will have to come up in some way or other that would be unpleasant uh, because everything needs to be in line with that. Need to find out what's going under there, going on under there. Because uh, not only do I need to move the waste over there, I must say I need to move the supply pipes. So that's what's going to be happening this afternoon. Right, you will probably have heard of the um, Robert Burns poem to a mouse. And there's a line in there that says, and I won't do the accent because I'll upset all my Scottish friends. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. OK, right. There's a hole. <laughs> That's under the floor. Floor came up with um, quite a bit of uh, soaring. And underneath is fine. These are engineered joists. And you have a top cord and a bottom cord and a web in the middle. It's like a wooden rolled steel joist. In fact, it is a joist. Um, and there are rules about putting holes in them um, because you don't want to do that. Anyway, that's by the by. The waste for the shower base is in the middle of the short edge. So as the shower base is 800 wide, the waste will be at the 400 millimeter mark. And if I can find my tape measure, I'll show you where that comes. Guess where? Can you guess where? I bet you can. Yes, you know it, because that's how life works. So we're going to put a piece of plasterboard on there, which is 12 mil plus three mil of plaster gives me 15 so the center of the shower base would be 415 from that timber which is oh guess where yep you got it right on top of that joist can't do that and you absolutely can't cut a hole in it like you would with a solid timber joist and here's the waste waste trap it's a clever one um so let me just move that out of the way. The closest point I can put it is going to be where it is effectively just touching the edge of the top cord. So that means that the centre, hang on, I just need a bit more tape and I'm doing this one handed which is why we're all over the place. The centre of the shower base is now 520 ish from that piece of timber 
which means that if I say 415 minus 520, I've got to come back out about 100 mil. Is that going to cause a problem? Well, yeah, I've got to build a wall. I've got to build a wall within a wall. Um, what it also means is that the room is going to be about four inches shorter than it was. Will that cause a problem? No, um, because the vanity unit, or the basin, if I push it hard against that wall, the edge will be there. If we allow a bit of a gap at that end, say for a toilet brush or whatever, say four or five inches, it'll come to there. And with the edge of the shower base, it gives me about six inches. Um, so I could get like a little towel rail in there. So that's inconvenient. Um, so I've got to build a wall. And effectively what I'm going to do is do what they've done here, which is to build a frame with a floor plate and a ceiling plate, and then one, two, three, four studs in between, noggins in between those, that's a noggin, um, it holds two studs apart, also used in floors, um, and then what I'll also do is have some uh, little noggins to stand off so that uh, it's stable in all three dimensions. Um, so several steps forward, several steps back. Um, so lots more timber, lots more banging, and then I will hopefully be at a point where I can do something. Now one further complication, like I said, you are very strictly controlled on how many holes you can put in these webs because if you think you recognize this stuff you're absolutely right it's hardboard and about five six millimeters thick and that is what is giving the structural strength to this joist unbelievable isn't it but it works it really works um yeah, engineered, engineered joists. It's the way forwards because you don't have to have huge lumps of timber, which are very expensive. And I was told this morning that timber prices have gone up about more than 50% since January. So using lower grade timber to do things, and you can see here we've got plywood, is good. So when this waste um, is coming out, I can only go left or no left or right with this because you'll see why. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is have a lazy bend here and join on to the original waste, which is there. You can just see that. Follow that down, goes through the floor, turns through 90 degrees, comes along through this web, and then off out that way. Um, if I do that, which is it's a faffy bit of plumbing, then I don't have to put another hole in the web of one of these joists because I really, really don't want to. Um, oh, sorry, finger. Um, and then that allows me to actually quite conveniently, that's hot and cold water, uh, bring them up to the um, <sighs> Shower mixer, thank you. Words fail me. <laughs> um, so what we also have here, this is the feed for the basin. Okay, I probably won't actually need to do anything to that. I can probably just use it as it is. Um, the basin waste, what I'll do, uh, the, the cabinet stands off the floor a bit so I can take that through 90 degrees and up the back of the cabinet so that's all right the loo not bothered about because I'll just put a flexi waste on that that's not a problem and then I can extend that wherever I need to so um, yeah it's a bit inconvenient uh, we were thinking whether do we need um, if we would have got a shower with a corner waste would that have been better well 
as it stands, yes, but we didn't know that beforehand. And obviously, when I'm looking at the job, I can't um, say which direction the joists are going because I couldn't take the floor up. Um, you can't destroy the room that you're going to maintain, do the work in before you do the work. So it's just one of those things. We can work around it. Anyway, um, so that's a little insight into some of the little challenges that one faces on a daily basis. And some people have said to me in the past, why is the job taking so long? Well, that's why. Because you have to stop, go back, rethink, come up with a different solution, and then implement it. You know, it's not just, it's not Lego. It's not plug and play. So um, there we go. But not a problem. Easily fixed. And you can watch me do it. Probably. <laughs>